Welcome to the channel. Thank you to everyone for tuning in. Today we have a brand new watch set to be released by a Singaporean micro brand, which has been featured on this channel a few times, MMI. Now, since 2019, they have released seven models so far, and all of which have been pretty unique and really well specced out. So this is their latest model. Let's have a couple of minutes just soaking in this rather unique design. Now, this watch case is actually based off one of the earlier models, the Dumbo, fashioned after a Dumbo octopus. And that case had a rather unique feature, which was the crown at 430, but totally sunk into the case to give a seamless finish. But that was a 46 millimeter monster. So they have effectively reissued the Dumbo into this Cuttlecron. Name choice is questionable, but it's now inspired by a cuttlefish, but with the same signature features as their previous case, i.e. the crown and quote the camouflaged logs and features a rather detailed and intricate oil pressed photo signature of a cuttlefish. The major change here being the sizing. 42 millimeters by 41 millimeters on the log to log, 13 millimeters thick with a 22 millimeter log width. So that is to make the watch more appealing to the wider market. Now, for me, I really find this design intriguing. It's been a while since we've had a diver come out with a non-conventional design or a bit of character. So that's what this dive watch brings. Something very different and something which will stand out in your collection. You also get five colorways, black, blue and green with a subtle horizontal brushing on the dial and then the brighter lime green and yellow which are also fully loomed dials. And just wait for the loom shot, it looks crazy. Now they've also got two case types. This is the stainless steel with the same colors available in a bronze case as well. Now what I also like, unlike the Dumbo model, this Cultricon features their signature rotor date design similar to that for Tori and it's a creative way to integrate a date complication into the dial design without affecting symmetry, but it does make the dial a little busy, which is the only drawback, especially on this dive watch, where the main thing you should see are the large hour markers and not much of anything else. Now, they have gone with some really good specifications. Aside from the usual things like AR-coated sapphire crystal, a loomed ceramic bezel inset, they've gone with the more premium Japanese movement from Miyota, the 9015, and I've had lots of experience with these movements. They are so accurate and reliable. And in my opinion, you really don't need a Swiss alternative movement. These are just brilliant. Now, the one odd thing is 150 meters of water resistance. That's possibly due to that unique case back design. It can't be screwed in. Instead, it's screwed down, but 150 meters is still plenty for swimming around in. Now, there's quite a lot to soak in when looking at this watch. The main thing which is noticeable in hand is something I want to get across to you guys watching. It's their build quality. It's definitely the best finished watch. Everything seems so thoroughly well executed. Every angle and surface of the watch has been finished. The A-face has very soft circular brushing followed by a thick polished bevel which goes around the whole case exact machining and a high quality polish which then transitions into a vertically brushed finish along the sides with a very soft grain and a consistent grain now what adds to the overall level of finishing is the detail of having beveled undersides on the case that feature alone contributes so much to a more comfortable wrist experience with this watch you then get the muted matte finish on the cuttlefish case back which is a nice contrast and more importantly it does not irritate the wrist now they've also gone for a high-end bracelet complete with screwing links, quick release spring bars and an on-the-fly adjustable clasp. So they have definitely tried to level up and if not beat but bring themselves up to the current high standards we're seeing in the watch world. So the finishing is still consistent across the bracelet. It is a H-link bracelet with a flat surface. The links are all beveled across the edges and on the inner side. Now what's noticeable here is the center links are also finished well. Usually these types of bracelets leave rather rough edges to the center component and not many people bother refining them, but there are no rough cut edges here. And the on the fly adjustable clasp is also really well finished with the same fine brushing, polished bevels and twin pushers to reveal the milled internals. Now this is quite a big jump for MMI, but more importantly, the design would be awful if the finishing wasn't as high end as it is. Every part of the watch really feels premium and supports that distinctive case shape now let's come back to the dial and see what they have done here now i love the vibrancy of that lime green paired with the orange accents of the second hand and that small date indicator it matches up quite well now again the majority of the colors they all have the same thing available 
you have applied hour markers with polished frames and everything aside from that is printed. They also print the minute track in one minute intervals on the dial to pair up with the chaptering which has the micro markings around it. Now there's a lot of detailed work which has to be precise for it to line up. Now unfortunately with this prototype the 12 is slightly off on the chaptering but the majority of the minute markers do actually line up in between the chaptering markings. Again it's quite detailed work. Then you've also got the Tori style date complication. Precise cutouts and visibility is quite good. You can see the date with that bit of orange. Handset wise is one of my favourite style of hands. Obelisk style with a chamfer and a crisp point. They've got good length and visibility. But I'm not too sure about the polishing. I think maybe it's a preference thing. I think if the markers and hands were finished in black, it would have looked a lot nicer against the other black printing. I think it's a date configuration throwing it off for me slightly because of the amount of black printing on the dial. Now let's check out some functionality. First off, the bezel is a coin edge type with a really good grip and a very smooth rotation. It has the right resistance and a satisfying sound and I really like that bezel action. Now let's check out this odd crown. Now the main thing is that it does look really nice. I like how it fits right into the case, giving that seamless look. They've also added the detail of the little point to make it seem like a corner. It's a really cool feature for sure, but it does make it just a little awkward. I mean, ever so slightly, but once it is out, it's very easy to use and it's got very smooth threading and good grip, so it does work quite well. Now let's check out that loom. Now the loom is amazing. It's very cool. You can see the lime green dial with a dull glow in the background, serving like a backlight. You can even make out the date with the orange bit and the rest is just BGW9. The handset and markers have loads of loom and that ceramic insert, it's just an absolute loom toy. And the little bonus of the loom crown, which is also very bright, it makes it a loom lover's dream. Now finally on wrist, it is so comfortable. The finishing combined with the shape makes it really sit well on wrist, but it also has a good presence. The bracelet is comfortable too and the benefit of these hidden lugs is that whatever strap you use, it can be hidden under the case and will be equally as comfortable as the bracelet. Now it's definitely a very interesting look and something to stand out. Now there's always the possibility it won't appeal to some, but it has to be appreciated the level of finishing on offer here. Now in terms of pricing, early bird can save you as much as 30%, which means the full RRP is around $500 which means you can get it as cheap as $250, which is really good value for money. Now, everything considered with the specification, the build quality, the refinement, and the high BTM auto movement, it's an impressive release by MMI. Now, the Kickstarter is open until the 6th of October, so head on over if you want to lend your support. So that's it from me today, guys. Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section, and I'll see you on the next video.